I am Marlon Manuel. I am a professor at the Ateneo Law School. What is the relevance of law to people's lives? In law school, different subjects cover laws that affect a person's life from birth to death, so cradle to the grave. But let's be more accurate. There are legal issues that are significant even before a person is born. So we have the controversial issue on the rights of an unborn. There are legal issues that arise as a result of a person's death. I'm sure you've heard about cases that are litigated by the children, the heirs of a deceased person, long after that person's death. Whether we like it or not, law is part of our lives. We will discuss legal empowerment. But it is important for us to first understand the connection between law and people's lives. How do people see the law and the legal system? Is law seen as a protector or a tormentor, a friend or an enemy? One of the first cases that I handled as a lawyer, and this was two and a half decades ago, was a case involving a farmer in my hometown in Bulacan. He was a farm tenant, and he was being evicted from his farmland, the farm that he has tilled for several years. He was being evicted by the owner of the land, by the landlord. In those days, I would go to our ancestral home every Saturday, and I would usually arrive early evening. One Saturday, a few minutes after I arrived, he came. He brought with him an envelope and a one-page document. He was asking me about it. I looked at the document, and I, I explained to him that he was being summoned, that that document was a notice, a notice to him that his landlord had filed a case against him and was evictim, evicting him from his farm. I explained to him what the case was about. I explained his rights and the process that the case would follow. We spoke for almost an hour. And before he left, he thanked me and he said, Salamat, attorney. Nalinawa na ako ngayon. Mula nang natanggap ko itong papel na to, hindi na ako nakatulog. I asked him when he received the notice. He said, Tuesday. So from Tuesday until that day, Saturday, he could not sleep. He was worried about the document that he could not even understand. If you were in that situation, how would you feel? What would be the effect of that legal notice, that document on you? How do we see the law? Do we see the law as beneficial to us or do we see it as a threat? Something that we should be afraid of, some, something that we should fear. Law is supposed to be just, fair, and responsive to the needs of individuals, groups, and communities. Injustices, violations of rights are supposed to be addressed by the law through an effective legal system. That is the ideal. Reality is different. Law is not always just. Implementation of the law is not always fair. In many cases, Laws and legal processes can cause further injustices. In many cases, the system works against disadvantaged individuals and communities, those who are already vulnerable to rights violations and injustices because of their economic or social condition. In 2008, the United Nations Commission on Legal Empowerment reported that 4 billion people live outside the protection of the law. And then in 2019, a similar study, a group called the Justice Task Force reported that 5 billion people, and that's two-thirds of the world's population, live outside the protection of the law and lack meaningful access to justice. Two reports, and note that the two reports are one decade apart. They cover the same problem and the situation as documented had worsened. There is regression 
instead of improvement after a decade. Legal empowerment is an approach that addresses this problem of lack of meaningful access to justice. There are two core principles of this approach. First, victims of injustices, especially marginalized, vulnerable groups and communities, must have the opportunity and the ability to take action and effectively address their justice issues. Second, their direct participation in asserting their rights and in seeking justice is essential. So what is legal empowerment? Let us start with a term and let us dissect the term legal empowerment. The term is a combination of two words, legal and empowerment. Which is the main word? Is it the word legal or the word empowerment? Which is emphasized? Is it the use of the law or the ability to use the law? Legal empowerment is a capacity building program. It seeks to strengthen the ability of individuals and communities to use the law and available legal remedies to address the injustices and rights violations that they experience. Legal empowerment programs work with those who are victims of grave societal injustices with the goal of enhancing their capacity to know the law, use the law, and shape the law. And we will discuss uh, this one by one. First, know the law. Why is there, is there a need for people, especially those who are experiencing injustices and rights violations, to know the law? The answer is simple. Despite the law's significant role in our lives, knowledge and information about the law is not accessible. Here in the Philippines, for example, our laws are written in English, in a foreign language, and in a very technical language. So what do people do when they have a legal problem or an actual case? They go to the lawyers. They look for lawyers. But as you know, the services of lawyers are not always available and accessible. And especially for those who do not have the financial capacity to pay the lawyer's fees and the costs of a legal action. So many of these people are left defenseless, vulnerable to continuing abuse. Knowledge of the law is important. Ignorance of rights makes a person vulnerable to violations of those rights. The first line of defense against injustice is awareness of your rights and awareness that you can take action if those rights are violated. So now we go to taking action. Knowledge of the law is not enough. You must also be able to use the law and to actively seek a remedy, a solution, if you encounter an injustice, a case of rights violations. Legal empowerment programs do not only focus on helping people understand the law that applies to their situation. More importantly, legal empowerment helps people take action by asserting their rights, by resisting violations, by seeking remedies if those rights are violated. A common feature of legal empowerment programs is the training of community paralegals. They are community members, non-lawyers, who undergo training on the laws and legal processes that are relevant to their justice issues. As paralegals, they serve as a critical resource for their communities, helping their communities take collective action in protecting their rights and seeking resolution of their issues. Through legal empowerment programs, people are able to use the law and navigate through the legal processes, the complicated legal processes, to advance their rights and interests and to resolve their justice issues. In that sense, legal empowerment increases people's control over their situations, over their lives. Earlier, we pointed out that laws are not always just. That's an understatement. In some cases, laws are outright unjust, discriminatory, or cruel. Legal systems can be unfair, repressive, 
authoritarian, discriminatory. In that context, will helping communities understand the unjust law and the unfair legal system be useful? Or will it just help people realize the hopelessness of their situation? When we talk about knowledge of the law and helping people to understand the law, we are not simply referring to disseminating information, bare knowledge or information of what is there in the law. Legal empowerment programs facilitate critical understanding of the law. Understanding the law and the social context. Asking questions on whether the law is just. Not accepting the law as it is, but working towards institutional changes in policy and practice based on the experiences of communities, based on experiences of injustices. Such analysis must lead to action. This time, not just to use the law, but to shape or change the law. Law can be a tool for change, but in some cases, oh, in many cases, the law itself should be the target for change. Legal empowerment is not just about making legal services available to those who are facing injustices. Legal empowerment recognizes the inherent power in individuals, groups, and communities who are facing grave injustices. And then it harnesses such power through organizing and community action. Legal empowerment addresses specific cases, but it also tackles grave societal injustices. Legal empowerment seeks to effect systemic changes in laws, in policies, in practices. Legal empowerment combines the use of the law through legal education, litigation, legal reform, and other legal strategies with community organizing. This combination leads to cooperation and collective action leading to change. To summarize, legal empowerment programs enhance people's capacity to know the law, use the law, and shape the law. Again, the emphasis is not on providing legal services, but on strengthening the capacity of people to act individually, but more importantly, collectively. Legal empowerment catalyzes collective action, transforming those who are affected by serious injustices from being beneficiaries or recipients of legal services to being the lead actors, active seekers of justice and claimants of rights, hopeful frontliners in the struggle for a just society. Let me end with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights activist, a justice advocate. He said, and I quote, Those who adhere to the method of nonviolent direct action recognize that legislation and court orders tend only to declare rights. They can never thoroughly deliver them. Only when the people themselves begin to act are rights on paper given lifeblood. Life is breathed into a judicial decision by the persistent exercise of legal rights until they become usual and ordinary in human experience. End of quote. That is what we seek to achieve in legal empowerment. This is Marlon Manuel. Thank you very much.